Oh, before we start this episode, uh, we just want to remind you that we have a Patreon now. Uh, yes. We didn't before because we, we really goofed. Patreon is definitely, definitely the way to go. Uh, other than, I don't even think if they were using Coil, they've like, I think that we've just about run out, right? Like, I don't think that the new episodes are still uploading to that. Yeah, I think there's going to be one more episode on Coil, but yeah, everything else is, uh, it's on Patreon. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for supporting us and we are so sorry yeah <laughs> um but yeah yeah go to patreon there's three different tiers also i mean this well we'll talk about this off mic i want to i've been recording and toying with the idea of maybe doing like solo episodes like for one of the tiers if mm-hmm. anybody wants to hear those i might just like put one out and be like you guys like this put one out this- for the the sole 25 dollar patron <laughs> that's actually what i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah we gotta start doing wu-tang for martin screlly for just yeah. that guy <laughs> yeah we there's there's one ten thousand dollar tier and if you donate to that, you can call me on the phone for 30 minutes once a month. <laughs> once a month for for ten thousand dollars a month, you can call me for 30 minutes once an hour. I'll talk. Actually, you know what? If you send me ten thousand dollars every month, I will let you. You can have me on the phone for a full 48 hours. I'll stay awake. I'll take drugs <laughs> to stay awake. <laughs> it will be a terrible phone call for you Uh, but it will be long i think there will probably be a there will probably be a barrier that we break through at some point it'll be really bad and then it'll be really good (laughs) it'll be like the best (laughs) phone call you've ever had (laughs) i feel like i feel like we'll both like start tripping yeah (laughs) you'll you'll cry yeah So yeah, so do yeah. that. Donate ten thousand dollars, and I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I'll do that with you tomorrow. You're gonna have to set up your own tier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's fucking start this. Let's do it. For ten thousand, uh, for ten thousand dollars a month, no one else gets the podcast anymore. It's just yours. It's only yours. <laughs> I was gonna. I meant including to old, previously released episodes. We will hunt down anyone who has them on their phone, and we will break it <laughs> for you, our new father. Yeah, anybody who's like downloaded, like anybody who got it onto like one of their old iPods somehow, where it's like not they like download it manually. It's like we'll smash those iPods. Oh yeah. We'll grind them beneath the heels of our boots. <laughs> I'm buying a new sink just to garbage disposal your fucking iPod. <laughs> yeah. I will find every red U2 iPod with Coward Hour on it, and I will fucking pulverize it. Destroy it with our bare hands. Yeah. <laughs> that will be a really fun quest. And we'll live stream it if you do. If you donate ten thousand dollars, we'll like we'll do we'll do like a Twitch live stream where like yeah, you get which, to tell us which at that point will be the only public content available from us. Right, is your private Twitch link, and you can you'll get you can if you want to you can control you can pilot us like a Gundam and tell us who to punch and and what to steal. <laughs> it's gonna be like an FPS for you. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be just like an FPS. Yeah, we're gonna you're gonna be, be just... yeah for ten thousand dollars a month. We you will get an earpiece in each of our ears, a GoPro on our heads, and you can pilot us with no restrictions for twenty four hours. Yeah, we'll go to the airport if you tell us to. <laughs> and what will we do there? I don't know. <laughs> will we get on a plane? Will we get off a plane? I mean, we might get on a plane, but the plane might not take off. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we we, might... maybe we don't even go near a plane we just mix it up in the airport <laughs> <laughs> you ever wanted to see the inside of the captain's lounge <laughs> fuck it did you ever want to see the inside of the captain <laughs> <laughs> In 
all be yours. I wanted to take this 5 HTP. I fucked up. I don't have any water. Should Wait, I try to take dry pills? Why did you buy 5 HTP? I have no. This is this 5 HTP is like at this point it's like a year old. But I don't think it goes bad. What is it for? It's, why are you uh, it's taking the, it? It's it's the precursor to serotonin production. Uh huh. Yeah. Wait, did my cat just flip the fuck out? <laughs> I love okay, that, sorry. I like that your your livelihood depends on you never being diagnosed with anything or getting care for any ailment. Nobody can diagnose me. They've tried. <laughs> There's no way. Because here's the thing here is the thing about like mental illness diagnosis. Like they're not gonna they're not gonna do a damn x ray of your brain. I think that sometimes they do. No, but I know that they, they like they don't They what? ask you what you think you have and then pretty much they just give you the pills for it. Right. Yeah. And I'm I mean, look, I keep I keep my cards close to my chest. I <laughs> I have poker faced every doctor who's ever asked me any question. <laughs> now, now, uh, Nick, have you ever experienced anxiety and you're just like nearly passing out? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do you do get that when like they ask you some questions at Parx, like they'll at the medical study place, they'll be like, um, "So have you ever like have you ever like suffered from like depression?" And I'm like, "No." And they're like, "They're like really." And I'm like, yeah, no. They're like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have to believe you. Yeah. The weird thing about mental health is, I mean, you diagnose yourself. You basically walk in. They're like, what's wrong? And you're like, well, I have mood swings that are uh, reminiscent of the Wikipedia description of bipolar 2. And they're like, you know, in my medical opinion, I think that you have bipolar 2. And they give you a bunch <laughs> of pills. But they yeah. do not let you walk it back. I've been trying to walk it back. Yeah, no, you can't. Anything that you tell a doctor until you move to a different state, you can't walk it back. <laughs> I mean, you can just go to a different doctor. I don't think that there's even I mean, I don't think they're sharing shit. Like maybe if I'm like if I go to one doctor at Kaiser and then go to a different doctor at Kaiser. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. But I mean, they're, yeah, you've they're, got, you got to go to like a different uh, provider. Yeah. I mean. Doctors, I don't know why, they, they're fucking writing down on paper still. So there's no way they're, like, scanning that <laughs> and sending it to some sort of repository for another doctor to check. I, I give a doc and, like, I've never you know, even like, shown my ID at a doctor's office. Yeah, they take your word for everything. Well, that's why, like, when people online are like, uh, you know, they're like, you shouldn't diagnose yourself autistic. I'm like, that's how this works. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that like, there's there's no scientific way for figuring out if somebody's autistic. It doesn't exist. Yeah. The Doctors only... <laughs> just listen to you when you tell them that you're autistic. <laughs> yeah. They either listen to you or your parents. There's no scenario where a doctor just sits down with a patient with an open mind and explores right. what may be wrong. So they're like, oh, your son's autistic? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go in there. I'll hit him or something. What, whatever you do to fix that. Yeah, doctors love listening. To, I mean, my mom like had me on the record having so many like allergies when I was little, and I do have allergies. But the ones that she has me on the record as having, she just invented in her mind. Like, <laughs> like seriously, that's true. Um, and and because they just, I mean, it's it's a it's a gypsy rose situation. It really is. Like the doctors just to, because there's an adult in the room, they just like they're like, well, I would assume that you would know your child, and anything that they say about you, doctors are like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have I have allergies, but it's like so I I'm allergic to bananas. I think I definitely was at some point. I don't know if it's still, but like uh, at you know from like age sixteen back. If I ate a banana, my throat would close up and I would have to go to the doctor. You don't want to roll those dice? Well, I haven't had a banana in so long, I have no idea if it's still there. And I know that when I eat uh, avocados, my throat gets, like, itchy but doesn't close up and I don't need to go to the doctor or anything. I just take Benadryl and, like, chill. And then I know that if I eat pineapple, it just feels somewhat itchy. So anytime anyone asks me, like, oh, do you have food allergies? I'm like, oh, just banana, you know, avocado and pineapple. And bay. Bay seems to think that these are all equally serious. So, like, if I, <laughs> you know, because she loves me, and I, I, sure. I, I appreciate it. But, like, if something has pineapple in it, she'll, like, grab my hand. She'll be like, don't eat that. It's so funny. Like, you, like she thinks you forgot. <laughs> I guess well, so. It's, 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 like, I, I've said this before. It's very peculiar having someone care about whether you live or die. Yeah. It still feels off, something about it. <laughs> well, I think what that is is you had incredible trust issues. <laughs> I think that you have some of the most phenomenal trust issues I've ever seen. Yeah, that could be it. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> what do you think it is? What do you think it is like in the fuck? Like, it, is it like it's not calcium? Because there's calcium and other shit that you eat. Wait, oh, I just there's I some protein in bananas. I don't fucking know. There's what? There's some protein in bananas that is like similar to a protein in latex, which is why you can be allergic to both. But I'm not allergic to latex. I mean, right. I've I've lied to women and said I am, but no, I'm just kidding. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done that. <laughs> have you ever used a Have you ever used a sheepskin condom? No, it sounds. I mean, it it must smell like sheep, right? Or like fucking blood. I don't think so. No, I don't think they're not giving you like a freshly bloody con. It's not like right off the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's basically like a sausage casing, right? It's, it's like it's intestine. empty haggis. Yeah. 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 No, I don't. I mean, I just imagine that it's probably like if you're if you're if you miss your foreskin, I would imagine that that's probably like kind of a close substitute. Damn, I got to go get me one of those. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, like maybe like because I, I mean, I know that you're coming. I know that I know that coming has been going tremendously for you, dude. It but... is. I have fucking gone full circle. No, wait, I've gone 180. 180. I would yeah. get him confused. I am fucking busting immediately like a teenager, like to the point where it's like a problem. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it, I've now it's flipped tr- back to just being like a 16 year old jerking off into a condom and instantly coming. Brendan, busting too early is traditionally a problem. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> but it's so it's been so long since I've had a relatable sexual problem. Right. That's it's true. nice to have one that you can like Google readily. Well, yeah, but the only people you can relate to are like children. Is the problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm at CVS buying condoms, and then there's like a 16-year-old behind me buying condoms, and I'm like, I feel you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing funnier than my dad like finding like used condom wrappers in my drawer when I was like 14 and like confronting me about them. And I like before he could even get like the the rest of the sends out, I was like, Don't worry, I used them with a girl. I guess like trying to like I guess trying to like big dick my father, but but the truth of the matter, but I mean the funny thing was I didn't. <laughs> I just jacked off into all three condoms. I like started dating somebody, one of my older friends who was a senior. He like as a rite of passage like gave me three condoms. He's like, I heard you're gonna need these, and I was like, Oh yeah, thanks, man. And I went home and busted into all three of them in the same night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, ba- I'm back to like uh it's it's very strange because like for the past two years it's been like just a a vicious fight to come the entire time just solely focused on coming and now i'm back to like just like ruining it for her because like in the middle of like she's getting into it i just have to like stop and be completely still yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna ask, like, because when you said your dick was back, I was like, "But how is how is she doing <laughs> with with this new development?" I think it's a nice self esteem boost for her, because in my experience, like telling women, "Oh, oh, I don't come," just so you know, I don't come. They never believe you, and they always think it's their fault. They're furious, dude. Yes. Well, women, if I can stand on a soapbox here for a minute, and and, and... <laughs> women, they're daffy. Well, they no, need to be they... sorted out. As... <laughs> they're daffy like the fabled duck of old but <laughs> women do feel you know for all for as much toxic masculinity as there's going around women feel very entitled to come women feel very there's they really, real ownership of come they believe that come is their property yes dude <laughs> absolutely it's not right <laughs> it's wrong <laughs> It truly is. It's very wrong. I used to be very proud of the fact that uh, I didn't. I, I typically don't bust like the first time I'm with somebody, just because like I'm kind of like in my own head. But it almost <laughs> used to be. It, it, yeah, it babe, almost... I can fucking lay pipe. I'm so scared. I'll never come. <laughs> well, that's not how I sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I I sell it. I'm much more of a Sylvester Stallone. Uh, it's it's it's. Uh, it, there's a lot more machismo to it. Um, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, the the you know the coolest guy that I can think of. <laughs> if I were, if I were to think about one guy who doesn't come early, it's Sylvester Stallone. But, oh man, um, <laughs> fucking Sylvester Stallone must be a nightmare because one we've already accurately pegged that he can't come, and uh, right. that's on the record. 
Yeah. Um, and two, his face doesn't move. So there's yeah, zero feed, there's zero feedback on how he's feeling. Uh, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like that's that's the most you're gonna get. Well, what, when I I used to kind of like you, uh, the fact that I like yeah. wouldn't come. Sylvester so Stallone doesn't come. He goes the distance. <laughs> yeah, I have the tiger. Just starts playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, he gets yeah, knocked he, out the final round, but you know he was an amateur. <laughs> he 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 played it with the heavyweights. Yeah, Sylvester Stallone is like eating a woman's pussy for so long that like when he when he brings his face up, it's like covered in bruises. He has to go to the corner of the room and like Paulie cuts him, and then he's ready to eat more pussy. <laughs> Dude, I need a fucking coach for when I fuck. Uh, yeah, you yeah you need a little Italian guy. In a fucking, you know, in a pork pie hat with a wet towel, just like <laughs> <laughs> just rooting in the corner the whole time you're laying pipe. Yeah, well, yeah, just yelling out different strategies I'm supposed to do. <laughs> it would be my not coming would kind of like turn into like a passive aggressive thing because like I, there were a couple instances where like the first time like I slept with somebody they would let me know up front they're like I, they're like just so you know like it's kind of hard for me to come and i was like just so you know i'm not gonna come either so now, so it's, now it's like a mexican standoff situation <laughs> like like we're both you have just, a gun at the bank basically yeah. at this point. <laughs> we're both we're both just like fucking to no end kind of like passive aggressively <laughs> just like just just all, almost like it to like just so you know i hate this and you so your move right. Oh, oh, you, oh, you think that you're burdened? You think that I, you think that I'm so unburdened as a man? Well, I also can't experience sexual pleasure, and I'm going to make you very conscious of that the whole time that I'm having sex with you. <laughs> so, we'll see. I'm going to be thinking of different uh, video game YouTubers that I was watching earlier today instead yeah. of looking at your tits. <laughs> I'm like when the dark version of somebody like shows up in a movie. She's like, I can't come, and I'm like, I'm just like you. I'm like you, but stronger. <laughs> You're the just, other Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just Dark Link. <laughs> no, you're Taskmaster. You're like, oh, you can't come? Well, I have studied your every move and can thus counter it. That's it, exactly. <laughs> Much like Taskmaster, I wear a spooky skull when I fuck. <laughs> That would be such a that would be such a like ninth inning red flag. Like having a great date with the woman, taking her back to your bedroom, you say all the right stuff, the mood lighting is perfect, you pick the best song ever to fuck to, and then you go one moment and when you turn around you've got a human skull on your head. <laughs> yeah, that would be a tough sell probably. It's like, fuck so close. <laughs> <laughs> well if it's anything like back when i used to be a guy who uh like got laid during that like brief year and a half um yeah. in my early 20s the girl her response would be like well i'm doing this to punish myself so fine jesus christ <laughs> i'm not fucking this guy so that i can have fun <laughs> i'm doing it because this is what i think i deserve <laughs> this is what this some is reason what i this I'm, is just what I need to do yeah. right now. No, I'm not fucking this guy because it's going to be good. I'm I'm fucking this guy because the date's over. <laughs> and that's what happens. That really was true for a fucking long time. I mean, I do kind of miss that. <laughs> yeah, the, you do get into, like, um, online dating turns you into, like, a serial killer recreating his first kill. Well, I mean, you know what's funny? I've said that about myself. <laughs> multiple times because i had a there was something really really like a really dark moment for me was when when i would like meet up with people on tinder i would to always take them this is so psychotic i would take them to the same bar in hamden <laughs> kiss we would go outside i would wait until the exact same street light to kiss them i kissed all of them at the same street light and then from there we would go, do you want to go back to my place? Let's do it. And we would usually take like a nice like moonlit, like uh streetlight lit walk through Baltimore. And it was like the same thing every time. And it wasn't until like I took a girl there and sat down at the table that I always sat down at and ordered the same drink that I always order. And then noticed another girl that I had taken there, like across the way. 
like uh, like a girl that I had been there with like three weeks ago, and like we both locked eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized I was like, oh, fuck, I have a pattern. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I'm doing everything but murdering them. God damn it. Like, You're waving that girl over to the booth, too. <laughs> it would be amazing if I just like got caught up in it. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I tried to go for like a score multiplier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the only thing missing is you collecting a trophy. Like the girl looks over and you're just wearing one of her earrings that she left at your place. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> it would be incredible if I started collecting girls' jewelry like I was like the predator or something. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah, girl you're, I fuck. You're the fucking <laughs> nurse in Fargo. Yeah. <laughs> Every girl I fuck, I like I like steal an, another article of their clothing and like yeah. add it to myself. You My just have like a like... scrunchie and a newspaper clipping in a box. Yeah. Well, not even that. Not even that. I like wear them. My, all my friends are like, Nick, are you trans? And I'm like, no, actually, I've been getting so much pussy. <laughs> I've been getting more <laughs> pussy than I've ever gotten in my life. <laughs> Nick, why are you wearing nine bracelets? <laughs> oh, man, I did used to wear. Oh, yeah, that's fuck. where the peacocking comes from. That's where like uh, pickup artists get it from is they're just wearing the women's clothes. <laughs> Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> I would I would love for that to be true because that means that they're like exclusively fucking like 19-year-old girls at like warehouse raves. It's just like, <laughs> why are you wearing like fuzzy thigh-high boots? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I the 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 peacocking thing is uh certainly a uh, cer- certainly that's fake news. I back in my uh sexual fucking days uh, I got, I, I only had success when I dressed in a way where it wasn't even clear I was there, just <laughs> completely <laughs> blending into the. It was the sartorial equivalent of like Homer backing into the hedge. <laughs> That's what I had to do. Do you know when I would get the? Do you know when I would like get the most immediate female attention? Immediately Whenever post I, set. What? Immediately after a set. No, I mean, I mean, clothes wise, it would be when I would show up to Mike's right after I had like worked a long shift at the restaurant. So I, I like showed up with like, you know, like dress shirt, unbuttoned, kind of sweaty, like, you know, like buckle, like tie hanging down, just looking like a complete mess. And for whatever, I, maybe it's because I looked like an impassioned man. Like, like, <laughs> like it looks like, I, I don't know. Strong I, like, I, theory. I, I don't know what else. <laughs> like i mean like i guess like you look at that you're like oh, wait, oh was he just what, was he just writing a book blackout drunk what was he doing <laughs> yeah when you wear an outfit that doesn't belong in that year that's certainly yeah. something it's like oh he's wearing an opened vest and a loose tie with his sleeves rolled up it oh, appears he, he uh dispatches taxis in the 70s yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he must be like a like an Ernest Hemingway type. He was pretty, yeah. Like what I just, I think that I, certainly I, I, he wasn't just washing dishes. <laughs> well, it's a very poetic look. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would, I would always notice like whenever I would, whenever I would show up looking like a complete fucking mess, I would, girls seem to like that. I don't, I should just like go back to like embracing that. I should just like, I always like did the best when I was like looking my worst, which is which I think is a thing that you can do. There's there's a way to like look bad <laughs> that women seem to love. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, there's like different kinds of dressing bad. I feel like there's like there's dude dressing bad and then there's the dressing bad that you'll see. It's like a like a married guy in his like early 30s. Or he hasn't right. gone full dad yet, but he's definitely like is starting to just wear things that the girl like gives him. Yes, yes, absolutely. I I cannot wait to get there because I'm <laughs> so t- I'm serious. I'm so like now that like I'm in a more serious relationship, I'm like fully just like I'll tell her all the time. I'm like, what would you like me to wear? Please dress me. Just send me <laughs> pictures of what you want me to wear. <laughs> Because if you because if if you let me if you leave me to my own devices, I'm going to keep <laughs> I'm going to keep buying shirts that just have assault rifles on them. <laughs> and the Which vial rules? of COVID, 
Yeah, which is sick. I mean, I yeah, I have. It's funny. I ordered this shirt. I ordered this jism shirt. It's got um an assault rifle with like an anarchy symbol and then a bunch of like Arabic writing on it. And I'm like, so there's functionally nowhere that I can wear this. And then the the best part is the front of the shirt has a vial of of COVID and it just says man made virus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I spent thirty dollars on this. I can <laughs> never wear this shirt. <laughs> But, uh, but plus, and I, and plus I, and I, like I, the virus is going to be gone soonish, so it's going to be like you're wearing a Kafifi shirt where people will be like, "Yeah, I remember." Well, that was why I bought it because I was like, "Oh, that's going to be that'll be like a cool cultural artifact." <laughs> <laughs> and I sent it to Bay. I sent it to Bay. I was like, "What do you think of my new shirt?" And she's like, "Uh, yeah, great." <laughs> she's like, <laughs> "She's like, are you going to wear that to Christmas?" I'm like, "No, I will never wear this." <laughs> I will never once wear this. I will never once wear that. I said you can wear it. I would like it if you would wear it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, that's true. I, I she was like, okay, I'll wear it, and I'm like, that would be like watching Bay traipse around the house in a COVID is fake shirt with an assault rifle on it. I'm <laughs> like, that is why I bought this shirt. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I haven't um I haven't passionately chosen any clothing in a long time. Maybe uh uh. Not to brag to the listener, but I lost two pounds. Oh, that's huge. So if I continue to lose two pounds, uh, maybe I'll eventually wear clothing on purpose again instead of just, uh, like, flagellating myself by buying a size larger T-shirts on eBay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think you're going to get there, dude. I think so. What's your goal weight? Let's see. So I was 184, which is bad news. Um, but that was also with clothes on. So that was like when I stepped on the scale and I had like my shoes on and uh, my clothes and everything. And it said 184. I was like, good God, I am a monster. This is by far the fattest I've ever been. When I was like at peak alcoholism, I don't think I cracked like 178. Holy um, shit. Yeah. And and I, I will maintain I looked worse then because it was like all – uh beer weight it was all like like i was puffy i was full of water it didn't distribute evenly it did not well it did but it was like it was like everywhere it was it was like there was there was air it mixed in there too it was like it was like the difference between like butter and like whipped butter so you're describing like a drowned person (laughs) (laughs) you look like somebody that they pulled out of like the east river (laughs) i absolutely i did look like um like if 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 I had died of a heart attack and like a like a cop walked in one second later like an EMT he would he would have called the time of death like days ago. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Um well, but yeah, I I mean, I don't know. I could get down to like 150. It's going to take me a long time, but like de- uh, you know, I have Do you set. think the do you think that the medicine is also probably contributing to some weight gain? Um, I think it's well since I switched from Zoloft to Wellbutrin, I think it's helping um the opposite because my appetite has gone down. Oh, okay. I just know that yeah. some of that stuff like Oh yeah. I guess I don't... SSRIs uh make you balloon. And really? I I didn't care about that when I started taking them because uh I was like, okay, so I'll get fat but I don't want to die, deal. Um, right. But then you don't want to die and you're like, fuck, I'm fat. Yeah, it's a it's a it's wow. That is really that is a devil's bargain for sure. Mental health is a fucking scam. <laughs> I mean, having a mind is kind of a grift. Uh, yeah, I've decided I'm I'm like a depression truther now. Like the way you think COVID's fake, I think depression's fake. I think that it's made up. I think I made it up as like a <laughs> well, you know, what's as funny? a way of controlling me. Do you know what's funny? So do you're basically describing the most reductive view on depression, but it's it's funny that it's like coming from within you. Yeah, like it's like it's funny that you have adopted like a father in the 50s stance on your own depression. Well, look, I was depressed then. I don't think I have it anymore (laughs) Um, because look, it's like like this is why it pisses me off because like I went to the doctor. I was like, I'm thinking about. Stopping taking these pills, too many side effects, makes me feel weird. Uh, I don't like the fact that, like, my insurance situation is hazy and, like, I'm on medicine that, like, if I had to go cold turkey off of them, it would be, like, dangerous for me. 
Right. And uh, they fucking freak out. They don't want you to. But the thing is, it's like I'm the one who made up me having this to begin with. I'm the one who walked into your office and said, hey, I have this. You're like, oh, I believe you. And let me give you the medicine. But then you can't come back and be like, all right, all good. And they're like, well, no, you have that disease that you decided you have forever. Right. And like, yeah, you're right. Why did you, you deferred to me earlier? Why aren't you deferring to me now? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like, I mean, yes. I and I, I'm being silly here. Like, obviously, of course you are. Obviously, no, depression it. is real. But it's like, I feel like my brain now is probably a little bit better off, even in a pandemic, than it was like when I started going to therapy and like having moved to L.A., uprooted my entire life, escaping an abusive relationship. Uh, throwing myself into a comedy scene that was just, like, socially ostracizing to me. Sure. It's like, I well, now that I'm not deliberately choosing every possible decision I can to make me unhappy, I have a feeling yeah. <laughs> that I don't need the same pills. That's fun. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, I guess your life has gotten better. My life has gotten so much better. <laughs> And yeah, yeah pro- is- it probably wouldn't have if I wasn't on those pills then. But like, why is it a fucking life sentence? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not. I'm. I'm also not a doctor. But I think that if there's one thing we can say, we gotta get a doctor on here. We need. Well, no, I would. I don't want to shatter the illusion. <laughs> Because I think that if there's one thing that we can conclu- conclusively say and take away from this is that depression is fake. Depression? <laughs> no, it's true. Listen, I'm telling you. You're and you. You're actually kind of perfect. I want to take you around the country and prove to people that depression is fake. Yeah. I want to show yeah. people the paragon of mental health, Brendan Chris. <laughs> you have me in like a cage and you're like, I present to you the perfect man. And you rip a blanket <laughs> off the top of it. Everyone's like, ooh. And I'm just sitting there playing like Switch or something. <laughs> you're like, see, yeah. he, he used to be worse. And everyone's taking <laughs> pictures. The strong man picks you up. But yeah, it's like I, I felt awful. Um, and you could say that that's like a brain imbalance or whatever. Maybe I don't fucking know. Um, but I know that a lot of it was the fact that I had made every possible decision to make myself unhappy. And, uh, right. the pill certainly helped with that. And I, I feel like I should backtrack here a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that there's nothing <clears throat> specific about my brain, which is why I felt that way that medicine right. was geared towards, but like, Medicine, I don't know. No, I'm saying. <clears throat> like, there's long term effects to this shit, and like, why do I have to take it my whole fucking life? Like, no, no old person has been on Zoloft their whole life. We right. don't, we don't fucking know what happens. <clears throat> yeah, nobody knows yeah. what happens. Plus, you know, I go on the Zoloft, and it gives me the mood swings. And then it's like, oh, you're bipolar, and then they, they it's like. It's like if you if you go back to just the one pill, it turns out it's just the one problem. Right. This is I, a really irresponsible episode. No, no, no. Brenda, who cares? This is a com- they look, this is as we've said yeah. since Dylan's been on, this is not a new show. <laughs> um So now I'm just on Well Butrin and it's fine. Um, yeah. You're you're but, speaking for yourself, I think. I mean I do Yeah, think yeah, I'm is... speaking for myself. Um Really, I, what it came down to is, like, I fucking hate the fact of, like, the like yes, depression is real. Yes, it's a medical issue. Yes, medicine can help it. But I, I hate the mindset that I've fallen into and other people I've seen fall into where it's like, oh, I'm a depressed person and I'm not as good. So right. I need this help and I'll never be the kind of person who doesn't need the help. Yeah. No, I get. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't uh, look. Ultimately, don't tell me what to do. Which, which I, which you and then know, next I love week that. I'm like, folks, I was having a full blown manic episode last week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I am, but no, I think you're good, man. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, who, honestly, who who can ever tell? <laughs> um, <laughs> did you um, also yeah, really I, quick, I, I, like fucking? Oh, go ahead. When I, I so I went off the Zoloft and my anxiety shot way back the fuck up. And then I was like, oh, no, without the Zoloft, my anxiety is back to, like, normal levels of where it is. So then they wrote me those pills that, like, didn't do anything for the anxiety, but they just made me feel, like, dizzy and, like, weird and shit. And, like, right. um, and now a couple weeks have gone by, and I'm like, oh, no, I was withdrawing from pills that I was addicted to. I was withdrawing right. from addictive drugs, and that's why I felt anxious. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, man, all, you know, all of that tracks for me, and I, <laughs> and I have a pretty good, uh, you know, I have a, yeah. I, I'll be honest, I have a great track record with feeling stuff out. Look, so once I get off that final pill, I'm gonna go to hospital jail. I'm gonna rack up eight grand. We're gonna be good. Oh my god! You know what? I'm definitely gonna get like a call from my dad about this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it does trouble me that you're going off pills, and then your first move is like immediately imitating my behavior. I'm just like, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, the 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 coffers are starting to run out <laughs> yeah <laughs> well yeah i really hey, wait oh go ahead i was just gonna say i did not think that uh <laughs> like i i i either thought that the pandem- the pandemic was gonna go on forever or right. like not this long or like if it was this long that there would have been more money well there should have been remember the early days nick Remember the, the early- salad days of coronavirus? Already, I've already said this second lockdown. It feels like comedy boom one and comedy boom two because because in the <laughs> first in the first pandemic lockdown, money was everywhere. It was fertile green ground. We were staying home. We were gaming. All the best stuff was happening. Now we're in pandemic. We're in lockdown number two. There's no money, no opportunities. I finished all my games. Nobody's happy. <laughs> it's I mean, it's all comedy. <laughs> yeah. In many ways, every problem in my life and every piece of media can be interpreted through the lens of it being stand-up comedy. Of going to open mics. <laughs> <laughs> Should, I, I, we we explained it on the bonus episode, but that means there are like almost a thousand. There's like just hundreds and hundreds of people who don't know why we're on Zoom. Oh yeah, um, uh, because your your roommate. Well, my roommate. Got COVID. Uh, my roommate uh, chose to get COVID. Um, I disagree with that choice, um, <laughs> but he chose to, uh, you know, go on a big camping trip with a bunch of buddies and get COVID. Um, right. So, you know, I I did test. I'm <coughs> negative. It's fine. But we're still doing it on Zoom so that our good friend uh, Dom and his very sickly frail girlfriend can move back in here, right? Um, without without her dying, without her dying of uh, coronavirus or it it's it's horrible to inadvertently kill. Uh, your roommates. I had a very real fear of that. Where like I like, uh, wow. I guess I'm telling this story. Well, he's moving out. Um, <clears throat> what am I possibly gonna say? Right? No. I um. <laughs> so the oven, our oven in the kitchen, is broken. Mm-hmm. This was like months ago, and I tried to turn it on to like cook a pizza, and like I had it on for like an hour, and it didn't. I was like, oh, the, uh, I realized the oven doesn't work, so I didn't bother turning it off. And I went to bed and I woke up at like something like 6 a.m. the next morning and the kitchen was 400 degrees because <laughs> the oven was on. Uh huh. And I didn't know if it was also like still leaking gas. Like I didn't know if like gas was released or whatever. So like I turned it off and like normally that roommate and his girlfriend were there and like normal like as the day was going on, like they like weren't coming out of their room. <laughs> <clears throat> like I didn't see them. They eventually did like late at night, but like I didn't see them the whole day. They were really quiet. And so like I was just like going about like my day. And then like every once in a while this thought would creep into the back of my head, like, hey, do you think that you poisoned your <laughs> do you think that do you think that your roommate and his girlfriend are dead in their bed right now? And I was like, I can't even begin to think about that. I'm buying groceries. And I just like <laughs> Did I, I mid summer like, my roommates? <clears throat> that on I like kept like six points throughout the day. I thought that maybe I did, and then I ran through what I would say to the police and also Isaac and Tony if I had done that. <laughs> like, I like tried to get my alibi straight <laughs> on the off chance that I did like carbon monoxide poison. Your them. roommates finally come out, and you're like packing a tennis racket into a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> well, when they when they finally came back, when they when I finally like so, like later they came through like the front door like later in the evening and i was like too excited i was like oh you guys oh you guys are here oh my god i was wondering where you were like <laughs> oh wow for no particular reason i was really yeah. wondering uh where you were and if you were alive <laughs> i never say hi to any of my roommates <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you definitely i'll say this you definitely don't want to kill shannon i would prefer not to it's a bad feeling yeah even when you're just in the in the in, I feel in like, between state, I I mean it's Los Angeles, so there's got to be some sort of like local law about killing someone with over a certain number of followers. Like I'll get lethal injection or something. 
That's really funny. You get banned from Twitter for like two months. <laughs> for killing an e-girl. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're trying to uh, lock it down. So just me and Michael in the house. Um, oh, uh, Ryan's away? Yeah, Ryan's away. Um, he keeps sending us uh, articles about like how like he's not actually contagious anymore. We keep telling oh him my like, God, he's dude. not allowed to come back. <laughs> not until he tests. That's so funny, man. That's hilarious because nobody has. Well, I shouldn't say this. The point is, he, it's just so funny that that diagnosis came a day after he was like scolding a bunch of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, what can you do? You unfortunately, there's literally nothing you can do. There's no cure. Um, <laughs> did you? Oh, did you see that? Uh, Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Bill Clinton all agreed to uh, get the vaccine like on live television. Yeah, to well, gain to to gain public trust. I think I saw. I think it was a Coward Hour listener who posted this in the Discord, but they were like, "Yeah, same way that Obama drank the Flint water." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like, you know, that's we. Yeah, it's. It's definitely also like, do they, I mean, I understand taking for public trust. It's like, do they need it of all the people who could get like a dose of this? Like do Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton need the COVID vaccine um, if it works? I mean, I, I feel like the optics there are worth it if it does make people take it. Yeah. But also how do we know th- what they're taking? We're going to see them get injected with a needle. I don't know if you know this, Brendan. Medicine is very small. They can put anything in those things. As a matter of fact, that's yeah, medicine that is hospital. famously small. It's famously small. Something that I learned at hospital jail, and you know, this is the whole idea behind placebos. They, something can can look like a duck, quack like a duck. You think that it's medicine, and it's just sugar water. Yeah. So what? The is Obamas the are gesture? getting shot up with heroin so that they can listen to <laughs> jazz. I'm gonna become like a conservative radio guy, but all my stereotypes are like so old. <laughs> that would be awesome if obama if yeah obama all the used... blacks in this country are going to nightclubs to listen to horns <laughs> that would be so funny if obama used because heroin hits you so immediately too <laughs> like if he just used this as an excuse to do heroin on live tv <laughs> <laughs> they inject they inject him and he literally just like lays down on like a shag rug yeah like, I, on live tv i assume the moment he left office he started living the lifestyle that like republicans thought he was like rush limbaugh listeners where they're like he's hiring gay prostitutes to smoke meth with him yeah <laughs> Well, I want to know, like, what kind of access, because, you know, like, it's nothing but you get nothing but special privileges when you're like a politician. I mean, look at the Clintons, right? Like, I like I would love like if Obama wanted to get coke, like, could he get it like directly from the DEA? Like, you know what I like? Like, do, (laughs) do you think they would give it to him? I have to imagine that when you're a president, they fucking hook you up with drugs. I have no idea. I mean, I know that, uh. There's definitely, like, aides in Washington that that's probably their deal, right? Like, fucking, like, Republican senators aren't getting out of, uh, like, the back of a magazine and calling hookers. Well, I just mean, like, if you're Ronald Reagan and you're, like, privy to, if like, and you're literally working with the intelligence agencies to, like, to bring drugs into the country, like, like, like that, like, that's an op that you're privy to, you're... Uh, what's the yeah? Word? You don't get a taste. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like at that point, it's like you're like. You think okay, Reagan some... didn't at least rub it in his gums? That's what I'm saying. It's like at that point, it's like I know everything. I'm signing off on all this stuff. Give me some cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> let, you know what surprises me, me? I'm surprised that Trump didn't like shoot a gun on camera at some point during the last four years. I think. I hate to say this. This pains me to say this. I think that Donald Trump is probably scared of guns. <laughs> i'm not i'm serious yeah um yeah i don't think that he could fire one um not to be like a resistance lib or anything but oh I mean, here we go he doesn't have strong hands oh um, my god brendan look at i mean look at his hand i'm not doing like the small hands thing i'm saying look like he's hands. he's like a fat old man mm-hmm you must feel so good Fucking about yourself right up, now. Nick. You must feel so good about yourself right now, Brendan. Taking the president down. I'm making an observation. Don't do this. Join me. You think Donald Trump can handle a, bu- a bump stock? 
No, I said that he couldn't. I said I'd yeah. be scared of guns. <laughs> <laughs> well, I That's found exactly. out at one point I was curious if he owned one. And apparently, um, I think uh, CZ, I think the, the Czech gun manufacturer, uh, gifted Trump a gun. It was mm-hmm. like a gold inlaid 9 millimeter, And uh, there's like a picture of the gun. There's no picture of him holding it. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm. He doesn't a, yeah. strike me as somebody who is comfortable, or, or even. I mean, Trump doesn't have to worry about defending himself. He's, he's always had uh, an army of goons for that. An army of loyal, faithful goons. I would love, Mr. Trump. I know that you're listening. I don't know how, what money's going to be like post the pandemic. I would love yeah. to be one of your goons. This is my new take: uh, is that Donald Trump's a pussy because he can't fire a gun. I would love to be. Let me tell you something. I would love to be in Donald Trump's goon station. I would I would love to be gooning for Donald Trump. <laughs> That's all I think that what I want. you're describing is the secret service, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> which, which which he has for the rest of his life, I should also say. <laughs> which is so fucking funny. <laughs> That's what I mean like like people who are trying I don't know if I've already said this but like if they're going to try to arrest Donald Trump I'm like I'm pretty sure the secret service trumps the cops. Like, like I'm pretty sure there will just be there will just be an incredible shootout between the secret service and like the NYPD if they try to arrest him. <laughs> I can't I don't know that I, I agree that that's how it works. Well, but. if if you maybe if you read the constitution you would know you're talking about. <laughs> well, I think um I think the secret service is sworn to uphold the constitution and the president. So if he's no longer the president, like they, um, I don't fucking know. I know that. I, know... I bet that would be funny though. If like, uh, <laughs> like, like, uh, like the, the FBI shows up to arrest Trump and like five of his eight secret service immediately stand down, but there's just three loyal dogs. <laughs> that's what i'm saying yeah. that's what i think will happen <laughs> Just like, i think time I think to there's... enter valhalla boys <laughs> <laughs> i think that if, if the secret service stick around trump long enough they'll like mm. they'll go rogue like trump will basically be his own roving country yeah i would honestly i would love to see a secret service shootout just because mp5s are so sick and the troops don't use them no no just the service dude. just the fucking service the fucking would be, coolest gun. It's great I, in Warzone. I mean, Brandon, I wonder I'm what not, the Secret Service's loadout is like. <laughs> Do they have the Commando foregrip? Yeah, I wonder what, what their perks are. Yeah, what camo do you think they picked for the gun? <laughs> I heard that when Secret Service soldiers die, they have a perk that just automatically like throws out a landmine and four grenades. <laughs> which is actually not useful if you die near the president. <laughs> it's, it's actually a huge problem. It, it causes so many problems. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Carter dies of old age and it takes out a nurse. <laughs> oh, wait, that doesn't work. No, it still makes... It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. To, the president also definitely gets a loadout, dude. Yeah, the president's got to have some perks. What do you think Trump's perks are? Oh, I mean, Brandon, there's too many to count. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, normal well, his size are probably hands. more like Fallout perks. <laughs> I'm run me through those. I'm not super familiar. Okay, um, Lady Killer. He does an extra ten percent damage against women. Oh my god! Here we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> d- 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 does time freeze, and he's able to like select which body parts he wants to he wants to attack? Yeah, yeah. He can do vats when he rapes. Yeah, he's got a pit boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel, I feel like the VAT system for rape should get more, Nick. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I, I want to know more about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Let's make it less problematic. Let's make it gay rape because for some okay, reason that's more acceptable. That's, yeah, that's that's less problematic. So it's like you zoom in on a man's ass and it says like 40% and you're like, roll the dice. <laughs> You just come yeah, the, from across the room. <laughs> yeah, his asshole is just like illuminated by like a green bar. Yeah. They're just like, yes, I want right there. Yeah. I want to zero in right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's like the different parts of the body and it's like uh different percentages, and then you hit like on the last one you hit left again and it zooms in on like a raider really far away with like a one percent chance. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and you shoot one sperm 500 yards. Yeah. And hit him right in the eye and give him pink eye. <laughs> Let's see. Trump, um, he definitely has like the mysterious stranger perk, but it's Alex Jones. Oh, that's what you want. Alex Jones just periodically shows up to like defend him, I assume. Yeah. Just, <laughs> he just shows up periodically to take one shot and disappear. <laughs> that's so fucking sick. <laughs> Alex um, Jones is a mysterious stranger. <laughs> well, Trump definitely min maxed charisma. Oh, 100%. <laughs> charisma and luck. <clears throat> I saw there's some fucking like, uh, there, there is some, um, in the new Demon Souls on PS5, there's some coin that you can pick up. It's got like a one percent drop rate, and if you pick it up, it like it boosts your luck to like a value of like fifty thousand. And then like no matter what your other stats are, just like every boss you come across, you slay them in one hit. And I was like, oh, that's what Trump did for sure. <laughs> like he like <laughs> like like the rest of his stats are are clearly low to middling <laughs> yeah he yeah just he focused on this one weird area where he that that apparently breaks the game <laughs> what trump it from an outsider's perspective it it looks like he made a deal with the devil but one of those like uh like secretly like uh monkey's paw deals but then he's also beating it right definitely <laughs> oh absolutely like he's been cursed for so long that he knows all the ins and outs yeah. <laughs> the devil is just pissed yeah that would be awesome to like power lift the monkey's paw to the point where like it does you're like i don't even feel the bad luck <laughs> i don't even notice anymore <laughs> yeah you literally give birth to an autistic son you're like he's fine look at yeah. is. really like trump must have uh <laughs> I got to give him credit. He has a lot of fortitude. Like if you woke, I'm, if, if you knew nothing of the past four years and you woke up tomorrow in his shoes, I would panic. Oh yeah. I would be like, well, Oh no, everything has gone so wrong. Well, but he's just thriving. I liked the part where you said you were going to give Trump credit. The rest, I don't know if I like <laughs> it, but we, we have what can I, can I ask you this? I want to ask everybody this. We have one more month of the, of, of the president and, just, and really, we can't respect him in his twilight years. We can't just we can't just have a month of respect going out. People, I don't know what's happening to kids today. <laughs> Nobody will respect the president. Yeah, and I've seen you out in your neighborhood talking to the kids, <laughs> trying to explain to them why. You know what? My window is wide open. <laughs> I live next to a house full of cam girls. I'm sure I should fucking shut this. You do? I'm going to shut this window. <laughs> I'm sure that they're I'm sure that one of them is like TikToking this entire outburst. You live next to Cam Girls? How do you know? Cause I can hear them. <laughs> and I've seen them. Uh -huh. <clears throat> huh. I live next to <clears throat> girls who they're doing some I mean, fuck. I, I was so goddamn you know and how I know that's bad. <laughs> what I just said and how what? loud I said it. Because I can hear every conversation that they have in their house when the windows are closed. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck well i guess what this means is when i leave the house in the morning i just can't go that way i just i gotta take the long way to the grocery store i've got to turn left instead of right i can never turn right again <laughs> for the rest of the time that i live here well what you like... gotta do is like um you gotta be bringing out your trash cans at the same time as them and then you're like oh man how are things yeah uh my roommate tony man he's a fucking <laughs> trump supporter <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> anyway uh i'm nick how's it going um yeah <laughs> i'm I, <laughs> what are your names yeah what are your names I, so i am very sex positive just in case I, I heard what he was shouting and i just think i thought i i think it's great i thought what he said was a bunch of junk <laughs> I, just no, want, like I, just, I just yeah i just you know i just want you guys to know that like uh you know uh i used to a live stream for my podcast uh you know it doesn't have a name actually so you can't look it up but uh if you ever need help with like your tech or anything <laughs> <laughs> we should get him on the cast maybe that's what i'll do maybe that'll be my peace offering <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be like, I don't know if you guys might have heard me uh, shouting through my window, denigrating you last weekend. 
<laughs> would you like a chance? Would you like a chance to defend and redeem yourself? <laughs> That's how I phrase it. Would you like to come into my yeah. room and defend your honor on Skype? <laughs> Oh, so is your audience, like, uh, the kind of guys who would pay for, like, um, OnlyFans? Well, no, they all hate sex. In <laughs> fact, that's a theme in the show is that uh, uh, we <laughs> is that we we don't respect women and we hate sex. Yeah, actually, no matter, definitely don't give any, don't reveal any information that could give them any clues as to where you live, because that would probably end very badly for you. <laughs> for it's you actually and, bad that some of them you. have my address. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, we got to get a PO box or something. Eh, I don't. I move homes. I think that somebody sent something to the house that I don't live at anymore. Oh, really? Which, in some ways, is a nice is a nice sort of revenge that like my old roommates are still just receiving mentally ill gifts <laughs> from like <laughs> from my unit of incels. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, oh, someone found something racist at a garage sale again. Great. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. It would be so funny if they were mailing them racist stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do you ever, like, this happens. This, actually, Ryan does this a lot where, like, he misunderstands, like, the vibe exactly. Mm-hmm. So he'll be like, oh, man, you'll love this. And then he sends me, like, a news article. And it's like, um, it's like, man lynched. And I'm like, I don't think you really get the joke, <laughs> like the irony or whatever. Holy fuck, that is so funny. <laughs> it's not quite that, but he'll be like, oh man, you'll really like this. And then he'll tell me some story like in front of Bay. And I'm like, I don't know, Ryan, that just sounds real racist. <laughs> he, just, he, he just pulls out, he pulls out like a newspaper clipping of like the Matthew Shepard incident. <laughs> He's, like... <laughs> He's like, and the funniest part is other gay guys did this to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god great bit great great bit one of the all-time bits (laughs) oh god i should have i fucking should i should have gotten antihistamines i hate i hate i can never tell what makes me sniffle i don't know i'm sniffling now too i'll be doing well see yeah i don't know I'll be doing great, and then I'll just like get these weird fucking worms. Like, fuck, man, I hate I hate not being in control of my body. I hate not having total monk like control over every orifice in my body. Yeah, I have. It's one of the most so little things. control over my orifices. Yeah, it's a what's problem. going in? What's going out? <laughs> what's just kind of in the chamber, not right. going either way at the moment. The the heart there's a horrible the 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 in between of all orifices is like the worst state ever because it's like just let me know what's happening yeah yeah either my nose it's, there's nothing you're like I know there's shit in my ass right but what's it doing in there yeah I know it's there because when I wipe I get a little bit right but yeah yeah why why it's what is like it? is it yeah what when I wipe and it's like I'm putting on deodorant <laughs> on the toilet paper. It's like why is why is all the why is this why are they hanging back in there? Are they colluding? Are they are they plotting my are they, downfall? Are they all gonna rush me at, at one moment? <laughs> yeah, is my ass scheming against me? <laughs> my turds are compounding like interest. <laughs> so you die just like John Wayne. They do the autopsy and diarrhea just like erupts out of your body. <laughs> Yeah, like Kill Bill. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what, like, when I was real fat and I was so, like, bloated and everything, it probably was just diarrhea evenly distributed across my entire body. Holy shit. Well, yeah, I feel like you would have, like, perspired some of it. <laughs> Maybe I did. Oh, man. That's so great. That is a thing that will happen. I assume it can happen with humans, too, but that's a thing that'll happen with cats. If your cat has... Uh, urine crystals blocking its urethra it'll start to like cry piss which is in it sounds like something out of a fucking cartoon like that's some (laughs) elmer fudd logic (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) that your cat just how does it get there (laughs) what i i mean i understand i guess what would happen but i would assume you'd 
the cat would die by the time piss got to the eyes. Yes, yeah, your if, if your cat is crying piss, it's dying. That that's the other thing is like it's really bad if that's happening, but it's but it's also but like the image that I get is just like my cat. It's you know I imagine like somebody uh, sticking a hose full of piss into its mouth and it just fills up like a one gallon jug <laughs> until there's piss shooting out of like its eyes and its ears. <laughs> Well, I'm going to test this next time I have diarrhea, which will be soon. Very it's soon. always soon. Um, <laughs> I'll just uh, cork myself up and and, and uh, test the fates. Yeah, see if you can get diarrhea to shoot out of your ears. <laughs> I bet I can. Yeah, like uh, something out of a Merry Melodies animation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. How much time have we been doing? Uh, exactly an hour. Oh my god, how good am I with that? Can we I'm going to I'm going to go get some antihistamines. All right. You, can we call it or do you want to go a little longer? No, we can we can go ahead and call, buddy. All right. All right uh, patreon.com/cowardhour. Uh thank you so much. We are so sorry about Coil. <laughs> I really, but come to uh, the Patreon. Yeah. There's cool stuff there's cool stuff. We got we're going to have hope we might have some more cool stuff added soon like I said. I'm going to feel out this maybe doing like bunker casts. I'll probably like make the, if I do some of these, I'll record them, listen to them first, which was the mistake that I made with the one that I did in the beginning of the pandemic. I just like put it out. And then after it was out there, I listened back to it and I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so we won't be doing that, but yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some other like cool announcements this month, uh, like merch wise, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks guys. Bye. Knock, knock, open up, it's me, the crazy, shady, faded fucker, so rock the G's. I see a lady make a baby, lead her on in peace. Only time I give a fuck is for my own release. That's why I own these streets. Straight up, portfolio, showing growth, fuck a pay cut. Yeah, you know I stay slut. Catch me in the spot, lubing up for the self-suck. Oh, fuck, I busted already. I'm coming bucket so heavy. My dream of cream coming steady. Now my mouth open, I'm ready. I'm talking solo, heavy petting on a Friday night. That's all Talking bashing the bishop, more like that tuggets delight. I'm Nantucket taking all the time delight. I need to do it just right. Got my candles in the fishnets, cause it's on tonight. Oh, that's right, it's time to fillet. No need to debate me, I suck until I go ooh wee and spray my white pee pee. I got that ski ski ski. Uh.